Hello and welcome to Consider the Truth. My name is Scott and my goal is to help anyone listening to apply greater truth to their lives. Today's video is entitled Christianum's Great Lie. However, I'd like to say right off the bat, I don't think that most of Christianum, Christendom, <laughs> it's a hard word to say for me, I don't think that they're openly and outright lying to their congregants because I just think that they don't know better. Uh, I think at some point it was probably a lie, and then it was perpetuated. But basically, all of the Christian community shares in the same false belief, and they push it. Uh, so, we'll start off with the scripture, Second Peter says, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. So here's the lie. They say, no new prophets. And they say, no new scriptures. And some evangelicals that might be watching say, no, 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 we, we believe that there could be new prophets. But you really don't. You don't believe... Uh, there could be another Paul. You don't believe there could be another Moses. And that's what I'm talking about. This thought has zero basis in Scripture. It has zero divine authority, meaning it hasn't come from the Scriptures or from God. God's people relied on prophets for 4,000 years. And only God can do away with a 4,000-year-old doctrine and introduce a new one in its place. That's not something that man can do. Some Christian denominations accept the gift of prophecy, but they reject the thought of new scripture and personal visitations from Jesus Christ. So part one, prophets with power and authority like Moses, Paul, or John the Revelator. If God has passed a law that repealed the long-established gift of revelation and prophecy, which had been enjoyed by every people of God for 4,000 years, then it must be one of the most important laws that has ever been communicated to man. It is a law that everyone should be familiar with. When Jesus Christ repealed the law of Moses, he did not keep it to himself, but he told the people plainly, not only of the repeal act, but also of the new law which replaced it. 1 Thessalonians 5, 20-21 Despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. 1 John 4, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Christ taught about future prophets. He says in Matthew 7, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. If only false prophets were coming, then Christ would have said so. Instead, he gave us the key to distinguish between the true prophets and the false ones. If there weren't going to be good fruits and good prophets, why did he even bring that up? Paul taught about future prophets, too. In 1 Corinthians 18... 8 through 10, it says, Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect, meaning Christ, is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So a lot of people like to use this first part of the scripture to say there are no prophets, it says that it'll cease, and then they just drop it right there. And they never address what they mean by saying tongues shall cease and knowledge shall cease. They just say prophecies will, will fail, they will cease. And they forget to read on to verses 9 and 10, which says they will continue until Christ comes. Isaiah says a prophet will prepare the world for the second coming. Isaiah 11 Verses 2 and 3, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight 
of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. And this is, that whole chapter is about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And this is the prophet, God's servant, that will help that come about. So why prophets are needed today? We'll go into a little bit more detail on some of these, but to call officers in the church, to show officers how to operate, to comfort, reprove, and teach, to unfold the future, and to witness that Jesus is the Christ. So to call officers in the church. Based on scripture, all of this is based on scripture. Acts chapter 1, Matthias called as an apostle. Couldn't have done it without prophecy. Acts 13, Barnabas and Saul called to be missionaries. 1 Timothy 4, Timothy called by prophecy and the laying on of hands. Titus 1, 5, Titus called to put the church in order and ordain elders. 1 Corinthians 7, 17, the Lord calls and distributes all of his church officers. Hebrews 5, verse 4, callings come the same way that Aaron was called. And John chapter 15, the apostles are called and instructed in all of these. I didn't want to take so much time reading each one completely, just a quick summary. All of them reference prophecy as part of this, the part, um, as part of their callings. You can't just decide to be a preacher one day and expect to have the authority of God to do so. It has to come by one that already has that authority to call you to the work. Interesting note, Saul received his call directly from Jesus Christ on the road to Emmaus, but he received the Holy Spirit and authority by the laying on of hands. And that is how it's done. So to instruct and operate, John 12 and John 14, Christ did what his father taught him by revelation. Even Christ required revelation to operate in his calling as redeemer. Acts 1, apostles received commandments by revelation. Acts 8, Philip told to go to Gaza. Acts 9, Ananias told to bless Saul. Acts 10, Peter told to go with three strangers. Acts 16, Paul told not to go to Asia or Bithynia. Go to Macedonia instead. Acts 18, Paul told to continue preaching without fear. All of these things came by way of revelation and were required to do the work of God. And so all of that, is, revelation is absolutely essential for today's work. To comfort, reprove, and teach. John 16, Spirit guides apostles to truth. 1 Corinthians 2, Paul knows what to teach by revelation. John 14, the Holy Ghost will teach the apostles all things. Acts chapter 2, Peter invites repentance, baptism, and the gift of the Holy Ghost. John 1 John 2, those who are anointed are taught by the Spirit, so on and so forth. If you want to read those, pause it and read them. So prophets obviously unfold the future. Uh, didn't feel like I needed to explain that one any further. Witness that Jesus is the Christ or Redeemer. Luke 24, it says, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself, or meaning Christ. So all the prophets before Christ testified of Jesus Christ. It's one of the main reasons we have prophets. Okay, so new circumstances require new laws in order to suit the condition of the people. Abraham was commanded to depart out of Chaldea, circumcise all the males, walk through the land of Canaan, look east, west, north, and south of the promise that all the land over which he traveled would be his, uh, over, offer a sacrifice of different kinds of animals, offer his only son Isaac as a burnt offering, and then not offer his son Isaac. And all of this came by way of revelation because he was a prophet. And none of these things could have be, been found in the teachings of the previous prophets. All, all had to be new to him. And same with uh, Moses, who came after Noah, who came after Abraham. Um, no, sorry, Noah came before Abraham, but um, same with uh, Noah, sorry, lost my train of thought. Noah, Abraham, Moses, uh, Elijah, Isaiah, um, I, you, you get the picture. All of these prophets required additional revelation to do things specific to their circumstances. And today, we have specific circumstances that aren't 
going to fit within the Bible. We need new revelation for our new circumstances. Okay, so part two, no new scripture. According to the Bible, the Bible is missing the following books. Therefore, it should be added upon. There's 14 books here that the Bible references, it quotes from, that we don't have the original writings from. So the Bible is not complete. It doesn't have everything because it says it's missing all of this. Scriptures used to argue against new scriptures. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. That's Revelations 22. Also, Deuteronomy chapter 4 says the same thing. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish. So people say, no, at the end of Revelation, it says you can't add any new scripture, so we can't. I mean, what if we were to find one of these lost books? Nope, can't add to scripture, can't change a thing. Revelation says so. There, anyone who says this is totally ignorant of the scriptures and you should flee that person because they obviously the scriptures the, the bible was not compiled when john the revelator wrote that he was speaking about his own words uh, deuteronomy says the same thing if moses meant for that you shouldn't add any more scripture then uh the rest of the bible would be uh you couldn't couldn't be added in either we just have genesis and exodus and deuteronomy um Scriptures used to argue against new scripture. So, First John 19, when Christ said it is finished, it put an end to all further revelation on the earth. Daniel 9, 23 and 24 says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. And Matthew 11 says, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And people say, see, this means they're done. However, uh, in Ephesians, which came way after all of this stuff, it says, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So they obviously continued to receive revelation, and they continued to write what we have as scripture now. So a uh, terrible argument. Let's keep going. So Second uh, Timothy 3, All scripture is given that the man of God may be perfect. In Acts 20, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. People say, see, there's enough for man to be made perfect. We have all the counsel of God. We don't need any more scripture. Um, well, it's the same argument as before. They continue to create new scripture after these things. They have new prophecies and new scriptures after these times so how do you explain that it it's, doesn't make any sense it shall come to pass that if anyone still prophesies then his father and mother who begot him will say to him you have spoken lies in the name of the lord okay so this is zechariah chapter 13 this is also about the second coming of christ and it's speaking about the same time that we read about in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, that Paul says prophecies will continue until Christ comes, and then we don't need new prophecies. And so uh, it's, it's talking about the same thing. We already, it's, it's not a good excuse. So all other rebuttals that I've found are 100% man-made conjecture without any scriptural basis. All right, so if it's not in the scriptures, I don't want to hear it. Show me the scripture that, that says... There's no more prophets and no more scriptures, and I'll, I'll hear what you say, but if it's not in the scriptures, I don't want to hear about it. So why does this matter? Baptism and the gift of the Holy Ghost can only be received from one with authority from God. Number two, a prophet will prepare the world for the second coming. Number three, revelation and authority is required to teach the gospel. Number four, a prophet is needed to organize missionary efforts. And number five, the world needs witnesses of Jesus Christ. I know that there are prophets here on the earth. President Russell M. Nelson is a prophet. And if you don't know who that is, I encourage you to look him up. And I'll leave some links in the description below. And you could learn about who the real prophet is in the world today. Um, thank you for joining me on this. If you think this is important information that others might benefit from, please give it a thumbs up 
if you disagree with something in here, leave a comment. Um, in past videos, I've taken, I've taken a video down because I got something wrong. So I want to put out good information. This is really calling a lot of people out. And uh, if I'm if I'm in the wrong, let me know and I'll I'll get it corrected. Um, anyway, thank you very much and have a great day.